Hello and uh, welcome to Qualys coverage of Microsoft Patch Tuesday for August 2010. My name is Wolfgang Kandek, I'm Qualys' CTO. My name is Amol Servete, I manage vulnerability research. So we had a pretty big uh, Patch Tuesday this uh, month, Amol. How many bulletins are we looking at here? Today we are looking at 15 bulletins that fixed a total of 35 vulnerabilities. So yeah, as you mentioned, um, and as it is typical of August, it's a pretty, pretty big update. To make things easier for IT administrators, we've grouped all vulnerabilities into three sets uh, that can be distinctly uh, dealt with. The first one deals with web browsing. So there is uh, an, a, a patch for Microsoft MS-10053 for Internet Explorer addresses six vulnerabilities in Internet Explorer, mostly for IE6, the critical ones, but IE7 and IE8 are also covered. Further, we have fixes for several plugins. Two Kodak uh, fixes, uh, 55 for Cinepack and 52 for MP3. These are basically vulnerabilities where a victim typically uh, browses to a malicious website that hosts these, um, these media files or opens email attachments which have these files. Okay, then we have MS-10060, that's a vulnerability in the .NET frameworks, and the access vector there, here's Microsoft Silverlight. That's, that's a quite popular plugin uh, for uh, watching videos and interactive applications. It's a competitor to Adobe Flash, and um, that's why the attack vector is so prevalent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as you mentioned, uh, victims have to only visit a website that had Silverlight to get uh, to get compromised. So the file, so to speak, mm -hmm. opens automatically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, a vulnerability in XML. Um, it manifests in the ActiveX for XML, so that that needs to be patched, and one in the HTTPS handling uh, mm -hmm. for Internet Explorer. Actually, two vulnerabilities in MS-1049. One is a fix for an older flaw in SSL um, that uh, deals with the SSL session renegotiation, and the second vulnerability is in the HTTPS where uh, on the client side where the client is affected while processing certificates that it receives from possibly a malicious HTTPS server. Okay, so pretty big group of patches to deal with for web browsing. Our second group was file format vulnerabilities. The main one there, the one that was rated critical, which is kind of uh, new for Microsoft, typically file format vulnerabilities are rated as important, is the word vulnerability. Why is that one critical? Uh, that one, I believe, is critical because uh, Outlook 2007, it's first of all a um, rich text format or RTF file format vulnerability. Yeah. Uh, Outlook 2007 opens RTF files in the preview pane by default using Word. So for victims to get uh, affected by this, they only have to receive an email, they don't have to open the email necessarily, they just have to have the Outlook 2007 configured so that the preview panel shows um, shows RDF documents. Okay, so that makes sense. You, by default it is configured this way, so you would have to actually change the configuration to as a workaround. Uh, it doesn't doesn't apply to Outlook of older versions and it also does not apply to the, to the newest Outlook 2010, so users of those versions uh, are, are safe from that one. We further have an Excel file format problem, and what's the last file format uh, issue? That's the Win Windows Movie Maker issue. What's Windows Movie Maker? So uh, Windows Movie Maker is a software that uh, may be rarely used, but it is installed by default on Windows XP. So um, all Windows XP installations uh, come with the software and are and need to be patched. And need to be patched. Okay, so same thing. Uh, an attacker could send you a file through email or trick you to go to a website and then download it. Uh, we think it's a little less likely than the Excel one just because of the recognition mm -hmm. factor. Mm -hmm. I think people are more prone to open Excel files uh, than their Windows Movie Maker, but still a critical vulnerability there. Our third group are local vulnerabilities on the kernel level. That's correct. The third group has three vulnerabilities, MS-1047, 48, and 59 and all of them are local uh, privilege escalation vulnerabilities, which means that uh, the attacker's code has to be present um, or has to have already have some, some level of access to elevate itself to higher privileges. Okay, they're all in the Windows operating system, in drivers and kernel, ranked important just because, as mm -hmm. I'm all mentioned, you already have to be on the machine. 
Um, I think that's pretty much it. Are there any anything any special vulnerabilities that we think are interesting? Well, there are two vulnerabilities, uh, 58 and 54, that are mm, special or interesting. 58 is the vulnerability in IPv6 protocol stack of uh, TCP IP, and that affects uh, Vista, Windows 7, and 2008 Ardu. But since I think a lot of uh, users uh, here at least uh, are on IPv4, that would be a little less prevalent. Okay, so 58, certainly a future-prone vulnerability. You know, IPv6 is the new standard for internet working. We're running out of IPv4 internet addresses, so it is something that we'll eventually move to. And the vulnerability was found in this new component of the networking stack of these newer operating mm -hmm. systems. So that just teaches us that even newer software that's developed under the secure development lifecycle is prone to still have vulnerabilities. Now the other one, uh, SMB54, that sounds like an interesting vulnerability. Is that remotely exploitable? That definitely sounds like an interesting vulnerability. It sounds like a classic SMB remote exploit, but it does require a few things uh, to be configured for the vulnerability to actually being exploited. Um, the attacker should have uh, access uh, authenticated with at least okay. a read level access to the machine and it's also a privilege escalation issue. Okay, so that one sounds like, while it sounds really interesting, does not uh, strike us as being something that's going to get exploited over the internet or, or have a worm uh, quickly. So we'll certainly monitor what goes on there, but it, it sounds like uh, several things have to come together to be able to exploit that. Anything else uh, this month or this week? Uh, yes, um, well, Microsoft last uh, week uh, released the fix for the LNK file type issue. Yeah. And that's also included in today's update. Yeah, so that's, if you haven't patched that yet, that should be included, very important. Uh, any Windows version is uh, affected by that and you just have to visualize the icon, which basically happens when you go to the drive in order for the attacker to gain control of your machine. I didn't see a, a remote exploit vector through email, but it can definitely happen through f file sharing and through USB keys that can be easily mm -hmm. shared. Um, Adobe is also coming out with uh, a number of patches. We've just seen an Adobe Flash update that came out, and they have announced last week that they would upgrade um, uh, Adobe Reader as well as um uh, Cold Fusion, Cold I think, Fusion. Was, was being updated as well. So Adobe Reader was actually a zero-day vulnerability that came out at Black Hat uh, about two weeks ago. I'm, I'm sitting here with my Black Hat t-shirt uh, because I wanted to plug a couple of things that we have announced there at Black Hat. We came out uh, with our community site, community.qualis.com, where we are hosting our three talks that we had at Black Hat that go into detail on web application fingerprinting, uh, our malware detection service, and uh, the SSL statistics that we uh, covered over the last three months. So I would encourage you to head over to community.qualis.com and take a look at those talks. And uh, we'll, that's where also where we'll be posting our summary of, of what we thought was really interesting at Black Hat and DEF CON, which were really well visited this year. Yeah. I mean, both conferences were really full and I think uh, very successful. Yeah. So that's it for August. Thank you very much for tuning in and we see you next month.